We all know discomfort, that unpleasant feeling we have when we're doing or thinking about doing something. Who wants that? Nobody. We humans evolve to avoid unpleasant feelings. So we want to stay away from this and remain in our comfort zone. We only do uncomfortable things when we absolutely must or are forced to. However, paradoxically, those things that are uncomfortable in the short term oftentimes bring a lot of benefits and comfort in the long term. Tolerating or even seeking and embracing discomfort can make us physically and mentally stronger and can unlock superior your performance. Discomfort is necessary for growth. It helps us build character, learn new skills, supercharge careers, make us healthier, happier, more confident, resilient, and anti-fragile. Our ability to tolerate discomfort is one of the best predictors of success in later life. If you regularly choose actions that are easy, you will have a hard life. However, if you choose actions that are hard, you will have an easy life. In this video, you will learn how to master discomfort. You will learn all you need to know about discomfort and how to deal with its success successfully in different domains of life. Let's start with two fancy words, hormesis and homeostasis. They're really worth knowing as they will help you tame discomfort. So what is hormesis? It's application of a stressor or a toxin to a body, which initially creates uncomfortable negative reactions. However, in the long term, this generates positive outcomes, where body becomes stronger, more resistance to stress, to viruses and toxins. This has been known for thousands of years and has been used to build more powerful, more resilient bodies. All right, by why those hormetic stressors work. This brings us back to homeostasis, which is a state of balance among all the body systems needed for the body to function properly. In this powerful process, your body is constantly trying to maintain balance of different physical and chemical internal conditions, like body temperature or level of fluids, so you don't die suddenly. Whenever a stimulus is applied to your body that shifts your natural body systems, be it an oxidative stress, also known as exercise, cold or hot temperatures, or a chemical or a substance, your body will mobilize its resources to push in the opposite direction to that stimulus to restore the balance. And whenever that stimulus is strong enough and reaches a certain threshold, your body will attempt to create physical adaptations so that these same stimuli won't wreak havoc in your body in the future. This is a really cool process that makes our bodies extremely adaptable, resilient and anti-fragile when we grow stronger through discomfort and adversity. Okay, that's great to know, but what does this mean in practice? And how to utilize this knowledge for high performance and satisfying life? Let's start with discomfort and physical physical adaptations through exercise. I started running several years ago and after a couple years in, I reached a plateau with my progress. I wasn't getting any better despite more and more training and I was stuck being an average runner. However, once I learned few surprising facts, I went from an average runner to a guy who could win his age group in local races. Oh, and I also discovered that I was capable of finishing 140 miles Ironman triathlon. So what are these life-changing facts? Whenever you feel fatigue or exhaust during any physical activity, it's not a reflection of your body's physical limits, but only a protection protective emotion generated by your brain to pump your body brakes well before you come close to real physical exhaustion. This process is known as the central governor and it's not just theoretical science. It is backed up by people who push beyond their physical limits, like endurance athletes or even Navy SEALs. David Goggins, a former pull-up world record holder, an ultra marathoner and a former Navy SEAL has even put a number on it. When you feel like you're done, you only reached 40% of your potential. While the number is a bit arbitrary, it is consistent with what we know. That that is, when you think you're done, you're not even halfway through to your true physical potential. Okay, but what if all those people that are able to push through those crazy physical limits are some genetic freaks, not regular folks like us? Maybe it's just an example of the survivorship bias. Good point. Well, you might be interested to know that our hunter-gatherer ancestors, which share our genes, were so physically fit that all of them would be on par with today's professional athletes. Less than half of Americans today are getting their recommended 20 minutes of moderate to vigorous activity. People of hunter-gatherer Hadza tribe are getting not 20, but 200 minutes a day. It's not uncommon for hunter-gatherers to run, walk 25 miles during their hunt. We call it a marathon and prepare for it for years. Our ancestors did it simply to pick up their dinner. Other analyses have shown that the arms of the average prehistoric woman were stronger than those of today's Olympic rowers. Think about it. Both you and I have the same genes as our ancestors, so we have the same amazing physical potential. We are currently the fattest and weakest of homo sapiens generations. But this is not our destiny. We've got the same stunning human potential, the same capacity for amazing physical adaptations. So what is stopping us? It is not our genes and it is not our physical limits. It is discomfort and our unwillingness to tolerate it. This stops us from starting any physical activity. And once we start it, it makes us work less hard and quit. I used to think that I was training very hard a few years ago and yet I was getting no progress. Once I learned all these facts that I've just told you, I got myself a heart rate chest strap monitor to have 
have accurate measures of my efforts. And I realized that there were two higher levels of intensity that I could do. And now I was nowhere near my true heart rate limits. These new training sessions felt extremely uncomfortable, way harder than I ever worked out. However, once I realized that discomfort was simply a protective emotion, a simple piece of information generated by my brain, I could overrun it and unlock completely new levels of performance. And stunning results followed. For our bodies to develop new adaptations, we need to reach progressive overload in our training. This is a place where you push beyond your current physical limits, the threshold that forces your body to develop new physical adaptations. Real discomfort is a good marker that you're pushing hard enough. So welcome it and treat it as what it is, a simple information from your brain which can be partially ignored. So lean into discomfort and smile while you're doing it. You know that by embracing discomfort, you are turning yourself into a better version of yourself. Tougher, healthier, stronger, faster, more resilient and anti-fragile. You love it! Okay, so why did I spend so much time talking about uncomfortable, physically hard things? That is because this is the biggest life hack available. Once you routinely do very uncomfortable, physical hard things, everything else in life seems easy in comparison. Now let me interrupt this video to introduce this video sponsor. It is sponsored by nobody. <laughs> That's right, nobody sponsors new small channels. However, if you'd like to support this channel and see more content like this, you can do so in a zero cost way by hitting the like button or subscribe right now. All right, let's now look at discomfort and happiness. You already know that homeostasis balances strong external stimuli with body's reaction that run the opposite way to that stimuli. This means that when a person uses drugs like cocaine or amphetamine that drastically spike dopamine, homeostasis will act in the opposite direction to clamp down on those unnatural spikes of dopamine and create physical adaptations. So for example, this could lead to changes in synapses and dopamine receptors availability, which leads to unpleasant withdrawals and over time to decreased or even blocked ability to derive pleasure from day-to-day -day activities or anhedonia. This means that that person's natural baseline feels bad, leading to increased motivation to take more of those drugs. In short, it's a downward spiral that you really want to avoid. On the other hand, we have upward spirals. We have discomfort that is purposefully and deliberately applied to our bodies in various forms like exercise or cold or heat exposures. Here, homeostasis will act in the opposite direction to the applied discomfort through actions of endogenous opioids, dopamine and epinephrine. We know that such deliberate stressful stimuli can improve well-being for hours, with increases of dopamine by as much as 200%. So your well-being, mood, energy and happiness can be significantly improved by embracing discomforts in such activities. And right now there is enough evidence-based data available to treat those as effective forms of prevention and treatment for depression. All of these comforts mentioned until now involve physical processes, but positive benefits of discomfort go far beyond that. Most things that require significant effort are uncomfortable, but effort is a necessary ingredient for high performance in many domains. Regardless of our talent or genetic predispositions, we need effort to develop skills, and then we require additional effort to apply those skills to produce favorable outcomes in our lives. Moreover, if we want to learn those skills fast and reach high proficiency levels, we need to use deliberate practice. We need to go outside of our comfort zone often, do unfamiliar things which are difficult and frustrating. We need to go through discomfort and allow ourselves to fail in the process to learn better. And in some cases, consistent development of skills also requires facing another form of discomfort, uncomfortable boredom. Once we embrace discomfort, we can push our existing skills to impressive levels or learn new surprising skills which can be hugely gratifying on its own or even can redefine who we think we are. And of course, they can considerably boost our careers and earning potential. The final hugely beneficial effects of discomfort are in a very important area of character development. And in here I'd like you to know one more fancy word, misogi. These days we tend to think of misogi as a difficult challenge that you set for yourself that is way outside of your comfort zone, where there is a real chance that you can fail. It is scary and risky, but if you succeed, that experience can profoundly impact your life. It can drastically expand your sense of what's possible. These challenges are personal, so they can be anything you want them to be. Over the years I undertook many discomfort trials, including living in countries on other continents, taking physical challenges like completing an Ironman triathlon, taking projects completely outside of my comfort zone like redoing my whole bathroom while having literally zero experience and knowledge about DIY or even launching a YouTube channel.
I started another and probably the biggest of my discomfort trials. Our baby girl Kyomi was born three months ago and me and my wife Sonia decided to spend this critical first year of her life together as a family while traveling through the Americas. The idea was crazy. We decided to leave our safe comfort zones and trade it for an everyday unknown. There is so much uncertainty and seemingly unlimited options for things to go wrong, but it all seems scary and overwhelming. I mean, before this trip, I had zero knowledge about RVs or trucks. And at the same time, this journey could be yet another life transformative experience. And whether we fail or succeed, it doesn't matter. The critical thing is that we faced our fears and discomforts and decided to go ahead despite them. Oh yes, and if you were wondering, this is recorded inside my RV. So yes, the trip is happening. So why should you regularly subject yourself to a healthy dose of discomfort? Because confronting uncertainty, risk and fear significantly improve your confidence and your sense of control over your life. Once you embark on trials outside of your comfort zone, you learn that things can be scary and tough, but you will survive. You know that you will be fine with whatever lies throws at you, and normal stresses of life will seem trivial. And in the process, you will discover there is a lot more you can do with your life. Your limits are mostly self-imposed. Your fear cannot stop you, as you know that bravery is not absence of fear, but about feeling fear and doing things anyway. You will discover there is so much more that you can experience. Once you accept and embrace this comfort, you can be who you want to be. You can finally start living your life fully. All right, let me add few final important thoughts. I don't want you to think that from now on your life should be misery only. Your leaning into discomfort should serve a specific purpose and should take only a portion of your time. So for example, in physical exercise, very uncomfortable sessions should take roughly 20% of your training volume so that you don't get injured, overtrained and demotivated. And in learning, you should experience uncomfortable fails approximately 15% of your time. Purposefully seeking discomfort is needed and hugely beneficial but that shouldn't stop you from finding enjoyment in life for most of your time. And finally, while you are subjecting yourself to all those discomforts, smile, appreciate and love them, as they are clear signs that you're becoming the person you always wanted to be and you are creating the future you want. If you've enjoyed this video, hit the like button right now. This is the best way to support this channel. Thanks for watching and see you in another one of my videos.